The only person in this world that matters to me still is my daughter. But I'm still defending the fact that I didn't hurt her. The upcoming Peacock docu-series Casey Anthony Where the Truth Lies premiering November 29th will take a look at the 2008 trial of Casey Anthony. But unlike other series, this one will heavily feature an interview with the accused Casey Anthony herself. So I'm Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now and today it's Who Is Casey Anthony? On October 14th, 2008, Casey Anthony was indicted on charges following December 2008 when human remains, including a small skull, were discovered in the woods not far from Anthony's parents' house. Duct tape with a trace of a heart, as if a heart shaped sticker had once been stuck on it, was attached to the mouth of the skull. The remains had been discovered in a trash bag. The bones were soon identified as Kaylee Anthony, Casey's. During the trial, the prosecution's angle on the passing of Kaylee was that Casey was responsible and was the one who placed the duct tape resulting in Kaylee's passing. They then postulated that Casey kept the body in the trunk of her parents' car for a few days before finally getting rid of it in the woods. But lacking any substantial definitive evidence linking Casey, prosecutors were banking on circumstantial evidence and the defendant's history of lying to sell their case. Now, Casey had lied on several occasions during the investigation. For starters, while not a lie, she did didn't report Kaylee missing for 30 days, and even then, it was her parents that alerted police. But after the fact, she told the police her daughter vanished after she left her with a babysitter, but there was no babysitter. And while a real woman with the supposed babysitter's name existed, she had absolutely no connection to Casey Anthony or anyone that knows her, family or friends. Casey also lied about her occupation, telling her family, friends, and even the police that she worked at Universal Studios, but when police asked asked her to bring them to her work, Casey led detectives around the building for about 25 minutes before she jokingly admitted that she had no office there and that she had been fired years before this. Now, while the prosecution displayed Casey as a woman who would take her life, get rid of the body, and went about her own life for a month, even entering a hot bod contest at a club just days after the passing occurred, the defense, on the other hand, insisted the passing was an accident followed by panic from a young mother who had a rather dark past and a bad family life. In his opening statement, Casey's lawyer, Jose Bays, stated, quote, You will hear stories about a family that is incredibly dysfunctional. You will hear about ugly things. Things, secret things, things that people don't speak about. Referring to accusations they would make in court about Casey's father and brother and the supposed mistreatment they had inflicted on Casey. In total, the trial lasted for about six weeks, ending on July 5th, 2011. The jury, after deliberating for 10 hours and 40 minutes, found Casey not guilty of the main crimes she was accused of. She was instead convicted of four misdemeanor counts of lying to law enforcement, two of which were later thrown out on a Appeal. In the end, Casey was sentenced to four years in jail and fined $4,000 plus court costs. And on July 11th, 2011, she was released after six days with credit because of the approximately three years already served during the investigation and trial and for good behavior at the time. For the trial, 5.2 million people tuned in to HLN, making for one of the largest audiences in the network's 29 year history. Fox News and MSNBC all also saw significant bumps in viewership around the announcement of the verdict. The trial of Casey Anthony became a huge deal online and in the news. People were outraged that Casey walked away without doing real time for the crimes they were positive that she committed. Casey Anthony even held the title for quote, the most hated person in America by ePoll's eScore celebrity research. Now after the trial and her release from her four year sentence in 2011, she didn't say a word to the press and didn't appear on any of the usual shows that you'd think like Dr. Phil and all that. Her parents, meanwhile, talked to Dr. Phil in September 2011. George and Cindy Anthony were heartbroken over not taking any action before it was too late. No matter what really did happen, they did not feel that their daughter was innocent. Casey and Kaylee, when I saw them leave on June 16th, 2008, that's the last time I saw them together, is what George said on the show. Continuing, Casey again is responsible for Kaylee no matter where she was or what happened. Cindy said that she believed it was possible that the passing was an accident and that Casey panicked. George said he didn't believe that in his heart. 
part and suggested other possible accidents that could have occurred. Now, in a video shot in October 2011 and posted on YouTube on January 5th, 2012, Casey vowed to remain in hiding for at least another month, saying, It's just a little surreal how much things have changed since July and how many things haven't changed. But the good thing is that things are starting to look up and things are starting to change in a good way. I just hope that things stay good and that they will only get better. In June 2012, Pierce Morgan revealed that he had a 10 minute phone chat with Casey Anthony in which she declared, There's nothing in this world I've ever been more proud of. There's no one I loved more than my daughter. She's my greatest accomplishment. On the show, Casey's lawyer, Jay Cheney Mason, told Morgan, quote, She said that to you without any prompting, without any rehearsal, without any luring whatsoever. Adding, Casey had a bad background. Lots of problems in her history. She just didn't trust anybody. Casey also reportedly told Morgan, quote, I'm 26 now and I've been through hell. I'm not making gazillions of dollars at the hands of other people or trying to sell myself to anyone willing to throw a couple of dollars at me. The caricature of me out there couldn't be any further from the truth. Now last year in 2021, ahead of the 10th anniversary of the verdict, a male juror from the case told People Magazine, quote, generally, none of us liked Casey Anthony at all. She seems like a horrible person, but the process prosecutors did not give us enough evidence to convict. They gave us a lot of stuff that makes us think that she probably did something wrong, but not beyond a reasonable doubt. He continued on saying, quote, My decision haunts me to this day. I think now if I were to do it over again, I'd push harder to convict her of one of the lesser charges. But this wasn't the end of run-ins with the law for Casey Anthony. Nothing huge, but Casey was sentenced to a year of probation in 2011 for check fraud. She filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection in 2013 in Tampa claiming she was almost $800,000 in debt, not least due to legal fees, and had only about $1,000 in personal property. On May 23rd, 2021, she caught the attention of TMZ when she called 911 to report that she'd been in an altercation with another woman at a bar in West Palm Beach. No one was arrested, but the incident report stated that she and a woman were fighting over a guy they'd both dated in the past. The other woman told Fox News in June that the altercation had had, quote, zero to do with an ex-boyfriend, there's more to it I wish not to say. As for what Casey Anthony has been doing in her time since she was released, in November 2015 she filed to register a company called Case Photography, and the following year she was said to be working for, and staying with, Patrick McKenna, a private investigator who worked for the defense on her case and for the OJ Simpson defense team back in the 1990s. The Miami Herald reported in January 2021 that state records showed Casey had registered her own private investigation business called Case Research and Consulting Solutions in the state of Florida on December 14th, using McKenna's longtime address. Now, both of these businesses, the photography and the PI work, seem to be failed ventures for Casey Anthony. The now 36 year old sat down for multiple interviews over the course of six months to speak on the infamous investigation, trial, and aftermath, as well as the speculation surrounding her actions at the time, her demeanor in the courtroom, and her time spent in prison. She has somewhat famously refused to do interviews for most things unless she has a bit more of a say in how she is portrayed. Now whether that is to hide her own guilt or because Casey Anthony knows how people could possibly twist her words or narrative, that's up to you guys to decide. But that was a very brief rundown on who Casey Anthony is. Be sure to check out the docuseries and or do your own research for more details on the case. I've been Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.